I'm an elder law attorney, so the majority of my clients are over 50. And oftentimes they come to speak to me, and it's not always law related. They come for any number of reasons. They call me up. And just the other day, I had a client who called me up, and she said, Nancy, I have a problem. I said, what is it? She said, well, my husband was sick. He went to the doctor, and they told him he needed some lab tests. So he went over to Stony Brook. He got some lab tests. And then the lab called me, and they said that they couldn't tell me his results because there were two patients, him and another patient with the same last name. I said, that's terrible. You have to tell them to retest. She said, we can't, we can't tell them to retest because Medicare won't pay for it. So I thought about it. You know, I tried to use my skill as an attorney, 28 years. I said, okay, this is what I want you to do. Take him into town, drop him off. If he finds his way home, don't sleep with him. <laughs> you have to be practical. And, you know, these, that's part of what you bring to the third age. And you might say, well, what is the third age? And the third age is really another stage in life, right? We're born, we have childhood, we have adolescence, we have adulthood, middle age. And then typically it would be old age, right? But the, the fact is that people are living longer. So right now, the largest growing segment of the population are people over 90. And baby boomers, the oldest baby boomers, turned 70 this year. Now, in 1925, the life expectancy in the U.S. for a man was 57 years old. And for a woman, it was 60. Today, it's 84 for a man and 86 for a woman which means that you can live another 25 or 30 years after you've lived already 50 or 60 years. This is going to change the world. It's going to change the way in which we relate to one another and how society relates, because we have people with all this life experience that are still able to contribute. But the problem is you have to realize that it's there. You have to realize that this is really a life stage. Now, I call it the third stage. I've heard it referred to as the encore stage, elderhood, elder, adulthood too. There are any number of ways, but today we'll talk about the third stage. And the point is that, that if, you, if you don't realize that it's coming, you can't plan for it, and it's scary. I'm right there, so I'm scared too. And lots of times, we look at the media, and it tells us uh, about a youth-obsessed society. By the way, baby boomers were part of that, of making youth so popular, right? And uh, baby boomers are a critical mass, which is why they can make that change in society. And so what happens is we look at the news and we look at the media, and they keep talking about things that we can no longer do, right? So, if you look at a Viagra commercial, commercial, right? Four hours. I, I mean, I don't know about you. Maybe a you know, an, a third age man might think that's amazing. It scares the heck out of me. <laughs> you know, or flow. They talk about flow. You know, I'll talk about flow in my yoga class, or my Buddha and modern psychology class. I don't want to talk about anyone else's flow. And that's not even getting into bladder problems and, and depends. But that's what we're being fed, as if it's an ending. And then we talk about it in terms of the things that we can still do, right? I can still ski, I can still surf, I can still uh, do anything. And that's how we measure it. And the fact is that we need to find a different measure, right? Not looking back to a time when we could still do something or we can no longer do something. And it's, and, uh, you know, I see it all the time. I have some daughters that practice law with me. And there used to be a time when I would introduce them to people when we went to the Bar Association. Now I go and they introduce me to people. And about a year ago, we were at a meeting and everybody introduced themselves, and they said, this is my mom, Nancy Berner. And the young woman said, oh, are you still practicing? <laughs> are you still practicing? I said, well, I am for now. I'm, I'm applying to medical school next year. 
I didn't really say that. I was, I was nervous. I thought, man, what does she see that I don't see, right? Maybe I am getting to that point. Maybe it is time to, to, to do something different. You know, it's like someone comes in and says to me, man, you look tired today. And I'm thinking, really? I got up, put on, I thought I looked really good today. <laughs> but then, apart from that, there are the days when I come to work or I, I'm engaged in something, and I know I am at the best that I have ever been in my life. I'm in that flow that I want to talk about. Right? And I know that my judgment is spot on, and that my f almost 60 years of experience is serving me well. And, but the next feeling is to say, but maybe I don't want to do this anymore. Maybe there's something else. But you have to realize that you may have another 20, 30 years to do something else, right? And that scares me too, right? When you have something, an opportunity, and then the next thing is fear. And that's really what I want to talk about, this fear of what's next, the unknown. Am I past my prime? And I was thinking about Viktor Frankl. I had seen, you know, he's a psychologist, he was a neurologist, and he's a Holocaust survivor. And what he says is that between stimuli and response, there is a space. So I thought about that space, and I thought about different times in my life when I might have been challenged by a stimulus and a response fear. I thought about being on the beach. As a little girl, I grew up close to Fire Island, and we'd be out there in the waves, and I'd have that wall of water coming towards me. And three responses. I could dive, I could jump, I could ride the wave in. Of course, there was a fourth response. I could stand there petrified, paralyzed, and wait for the wave to clobber me, which happened plenty of times, both at the beach and in my life. And I'm sure it's happened to you, too. But in terms of diving and jumping and swimming, there's skill to that as well, right? If you're going to dive, you have to know when to hold your breath, when to dive under the wave, when to come up, because if you come up too soon, you could get clobbered anyway. And if you ride the wave, if you're too slow, you're going to get lost in the wake. And if, you if you're too fast, you may end up tumbled in the wave anyway and have sand and seashells in your bathing suit. I always preferred to jump the waves. One, I never like to get my hair wet, so if I could keep it up. The other is, I like to see where I'm going and what's coming at me. So I would try to do that, but there were even times when that didn't work. Right? You jump the wave, and it's longer than you think, or the other waves keep coming, and they knock you over anyway. So I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about Viktor Frankl, and I thought, you know what? Maybe it really is about that space between stimuli and response. And what he says is that between the, the space, the stimuli and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose. And in our response is all our growth and our freedom. And I thought maybe, just maybe, that's what the third, third age is about. The growth and freedom. And maybe it's not about what I can still do or what I can't do. Maybe, maybe it's about my response and how I deal with it. It's not brute strength anymore. But in order to understand that, you have to firmly stand in the third age. You have to recognize that it is, in fact, a stage in life, and you have to show up. And more important, you have to tell your stories. You need to tell your stories of success and the times that you killed it, but you need to tell your stories of failure. You know, the times you've embarrassed yourself and wanted to crawl under a rock, or the times your heart was broken, or your dreams were shattered, or you felt so lost you didn't know if you ever find your way back again. But that's what the third age is about, and we need to share it with one another. 
and we need to share it with the younger generation. And we've got to check the stories we tell, we tell to each other. And I think that in those stories that you will find that space that Frankel talks about. And it may be a little light of sunshine. It may be a beautiful flower. It may be a kind word from a stranger when you're down and out. Or it may be just a glimpse of humanity at a time when you thought there was no humanity. But if you could just, I think of it like an elevator closing, right? If you could just get your foot in that door, you can open it up and find that space and you can breathe. And I think that's what we need to do. And that's my plan. I plan to be here for the third age. I plan to tell my stories. And I plan to be honest about what the future brings, good and bad, and to not be afraid. Because that's the thing. The fear is what stops us from being able to move forward. So if that happens to you, no matter what age you are, when you feel that fear, like I felt backstage before I got on here today, and your knees are wobbling and you can't breathe, I want you to just stop. And right now, I want you to stop. I want everyone just to close your eyes, okay? Think about a time when you were afraid. And think to yourself, take a deep breath, and say, I will not be afraid. 